This is potentially a multi-day event where it will churn slowly across the state. Uh, that obviously creates a whole host of issues. It's kind of tough to predict exactly where Dorian will go. Once it approaches Florida sometime in the Monday to early Tuesday time frame, the steering currents really weaken, and so there'll be nothing in the atmosphere to pull it along. So that makes figuring out where it will go a pretty challenging task. There are several different scenarios. One is that it could ride up the east coast of Florida, flirting with the coast or going just offshore. That would keep the bulk of the winds right along the immediate coastline, but heavy rain, inland flooding a possibility as well. Scenario two calls for a much more direct hit. This would be the scenario in which Dorian actually makes landfall, moves on to perhaps central Florida, somewhere up and down the eastern Florida coast, and goes inland some ways. That would bring the core of 110 plus mile per hour winds, possibly as a category three or four storm, onto land. That could also set the stage for some dangerous, potentially life-threatening coastal flooding as well with Dorian surge. We'll have onshore winds for a long period of time north of the center of the storm. And that, coupled with king tides, the highest tides of not only a month, but perhaps the year, will lead to some really dangerous coastal flooding. Now we have several cities in play for this. We can't pinpoint exactly where at this point, but any place from Miami all the way northwards through perhaps Jacksonville, you need to watch this. But I think the best risk, Central Florida Space Coast, maybe down towards like Port St. Lucie. So timing for this is crucial. Right now, it looks like Dorian will make a run towards the coast sometime late Monday into early Tuesday. Around then, it could slow down, stalling for maybe a day or more and unleashing very heavy rains across much of Florida. By that point, it'll start to meander northwards, eventually fringing the coast of the Carolinas and heading out to sea. If that scenario pans out, we could be talking big time rain totals, not only in Florida, but also eastern Georgia and the outer banks of the Carolinas. Of course, you can find out more on CapitalWeatherGang.com and TheWashingtonPost.com. We'll be watching this around the clock and we'll be with you every step of the way. For the Capital Weather Gang, I'm meteorologist Matthew Capucci.